Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Andy. I'm Rick uh, And this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Tonight, we're going to be a little all over the place, which is the best part uh, about having an off-road power couple, basically, is how I'm going to term you guys. <laughs> so uh, I hope the listener and viewer is ready for a bit of a ride tonight. I moved my notes to the other screen, which messed me up there for a second. <laughs> you uh, look like you're just I, glancing off. In the well, it's like <laughs> I have all the uh, media assets to my right, and I put the show notes to the left tonight, and I was like, I guess I don't normally do that because uh, my brain went to the right. Um, anyway. As always, we're socially distanced. I'm still in the Midwest. We're all still in the Northeast. And Andy and Mercedes are in the Pacific Northwest. Yep, we are. And that's, that's always a guess on where the guest is going to be. Sometimes I know one of our sure. favorite games. Sometimes it's like, yeah, they move around a little bit. Right. Um, Especially with like Richard and Ashley. It's like, uh, what what hemisphere are you in? <laughs> Right. We would have been in Wisconsin two weeks ago. Yeah, so. I was going to say, sometimes See, exactly. never know. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they travel quite a bit more internationally than we do, so we know them both well. <laughs> well yep. Sweet. Uh, Ross, you've made a decision. Yes. Two, two things on my docket for updates tonight. I made a decision. <laughs> the Lexus is staying after much deliberation. Um, kind of <clears throat> just gave in to not wanting to backtrack on vehicle age and mileage and whatnot and also frankly i have so much time and emotional investment in this thing already so it is uh it's gonna hang around uh we're gonna do some other things to it and yeah it's uh i don't know it's too good of a truck to let go so and frankly i don't need anything (laughs) bigger it is are those Um, light force genesis lights up front they are, and there is also a Warren Winch on this truck that uh, that Andy may or may not have something to do with. <laughs> I see that. I so, see that. Yeah, we got it, the same lights on our uh, one of our Pajeros. They're good lights. They are. I, I almost feel bad using them. Like, obviously, never in the presence of another vehicle or anything. But I'm like, God, if there's a deer or something down the road, <laughs> they're not going to have a good time. No. Uh, yeah, they're killer. Um. So yeah. So the Lexus is staying. And the other update, yes, that is that yeah, is before yeah, I. Right. It's like having two sons on the front of a vehicle. Exactly. It's <laughs> great. The first time I turned them on, I sat there for a minute. and was just like, okay, lights have come a long way since I was running. Like, <laughs> I, I swapped them out for. Uh, I had Hella five hundreds on before, which are like, they're like the gold standard of cheap, you know, auxiliary rally lights, and they're fine. But this is just it's different. Yeah. Like it's the sun. It's the sun. Surface of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that's the, the Lexus update. Uh, more to come as uh, things happen. We're trying to plan a couple local trips, and the only other news in my household is that the Hummer EV arrived today for my week of pretending that I'm saving the environment and uh, actually doing the exact opposite. Uh, we are, at least as of now, intending to take this up to Massachusetts on Saturday to run through some state forests and uh, and try to find trouble where the Jag SVR couldn't go last just it was like right around this time last year you you mentioned this last time about how you're going to run up the same road as the jack i was like is that road wide enough (laughs) because the jack looked big on that little road i'll let you know 9200 pounds of environmentalism right there (laughs) yes yes um it is it's comical it it, and it's weird like it's not and this is uh one for the record books but it doesn't look as big in person as it does in pictures uh, but hey, okay. it is it is so obscene it's and it's it's kind of awesome like it's kind of awesome in person but i'm like god it is just it's so irresponsible and it's so silly but see i so, i find it very interesting that that was your takeaway is it's not as large as it appears to be in photos in person because when i the the dealer near me has three on the lot mm-hmm. they look enormous and they've moved them to different spots to like try to minimize the size a little bit they look well, huge they look okay. so big i i think yes and it, it is not a small vehicle by any means but i think the normalizing of the 2500 3500 you know hood line that is basically at my face is <laughs> it, it takes the relativity out of things you know when the h1 and the yeah. h2 came out they were huge and now it's like, I mean, my dad's Silverado 2500 dwarfs this thing, yeah. you know? 
and it's, I, it's... I was a I was an associate editor for a, uh, a publication in the hobby industry when the Hummer H2 first came out, and I worked with a guy who wrote uh, the wheels <laughs> column for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel in Wisconsin, and he got a nacho cheese yellow H2 oh, as boy. a review <laughs> vehicle that week, and we all stood at the window of the building and were like. Look at the size of that thing. It's ridiculous. It's right? so huge. And now the Hummer EV is like, man, this thing is huge. It's like it's crazy. Yeah. We've uh, History we, we have jumped shark on on vehicle size, which is part of the reason that the Lexus is staying, because a Land Cruiser won't fit down some of my trails. So yeah, God, that thing is just there it is. There, I don't know if there is more of a moment in time vehicle than that. <laughs> Seriously, that was a uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. That was a post 9-11 ostentatious, like, fuck you to everybody else in the world kind of thing. Yeah. Dude, my, my favorite part of that quick Google image search is every single result had rims on it. I had to go, <laughs> I had to dig to find the one with the stock wheels. <laughs> <laughs> and my, actually my dad had those, uh, those eight log H2 wheels fit on the 2500s and 3500s and he had them on his 2008 Silverado. And they were mm-hmm. awesome. It's like the right backspacing and everything. So anyways, that's all my updates. Yeah. Uh, Chris, speaking of uh, big, large GM produced vehicles, suburban things. Oh, it's like, wait a minute. Where are you going with this? Like, <laughs> How's he going to land this one? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, and we're talking about normalizing of size. I don't think of the suburban as big. Like I, I'm a 1500 mm-hmm. suburban. That's not big. Like It's lengthy. It is. And it, it really is. It is big. Like. I had uh, a large wholesale store over the weekend as I was leaving with my uh, strawberries and bananas and all the extra stuff that I have to buy the kids. Um, as I was backing out, a 2500 uh, GMC Sierra was like pulling out as well. And I was like, he didn't look that big to me. Like It was just a normal size truck. And I was like, oh, no, that's actually the heavy duty version. So um Anyway, I we've been teasing that I might have been starting to look for a different vehicle, but instead of doing that, I basically went out and drove the Suburban a whole bunch. Um, I took the kids out to a, a couple of different um, spots nearby. Um, the the glory of trying to off road in Kansas. I love when the new people join because they're always like, "What are the good trails? There are no trails. There are literally no <laughs> trails." They're just people's streets. And then we have these things called minimum maintenance roads, which sometimes are at the end of dirt roads that nobody takes care of. Um, When I went out with the kids recently, we did avoid all of the minimum maintenance roads because it was a little squishy and a little wet. And so like traveling by yourself. Yes, I had the Mack tracks in the back, but like didn't want to risk anything. Um, Mm -hmm. So we went chasing sunsets, basically, is what we I told the kids we were going to do. We left at like two in the afternoon. Sun goes down around Mm -hmm. five, five thirty. Right. We'll we'll try and get up. We'll find it. Literally, the clouds rolled in as we were approaching, and it oh. just the, no, like I <laughs> used a ton of Photoshop to try to pull any color out of these images. I mean, um, it's a cool that's, I was gonna say that's a great image, yeah, it, it's like a GM like press room image, that, especially <laughs> that one. <laughs> Shit. God, they gotta hire you, but isn't, yeah. isn't that kind of like <laughs> yeah. the Murphy's Law of trips with a dedicated purpose? Yes. Like, I went on a couple of hikes where it was like, we're going to get up to the top of the mountain. And we're going to be able to see the valley and forever. And you get up there and it's just fog. <laughs> yeah. Know? So that's well, we got stories like that. That's exactly. a pretty picture, though. <laughs> well, especially up there, you do. Oh, um, yeah. And so, like, I had the, the, the good news is the kids had a great time. That that spot really wasn't that far away. And it's a section of the Flint Hills that not. Not a lot of people know that the Flint Hills are in Kansas. They just think of Kansas like near I-70 and then just they're out of the state. Um, but kind of like Emporia down towards Wichita, there's a section of just like rolling hills, a lot of prairie. Um, at the right time of the year, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and the good news is it's only like an hour and a half out. So like the kids know we can get down there. And and typically I like to get down there and then we'll go camp at like one of the state fishing lakes. But this was just like we were short on time. Um, we didn't have a ton to do. So we were I was like, let's go take sunset photos. And they were like, yeah, what else are we going to do? And so uh-huh. we, we we had a great time. Uh, they had a good time. But what I ended up coming away with is how much more I enjoyed the Suburban than I realized. Um, 
once I was in like, especially on rougher terrain, like in the city streets, you don't really see the benefit of the mag ride. Going on a gravel road, all of a sudden you see, definitely see the benefits of a mag ride. I always uh, forget just, that thing as mag. That's yeah. yeah. And yeah. so just having a great time and and we let them get out and let them throw rocks and creeks and stuff. And just they they had a blast. And so I think I'm definitely gonna keep the suburban. I think I'll take a more of an economical budget and kind of I'm probably gonna put a rack on it. Um there's not a lot of options. Um but, yeah, this is a a call out to the aftermarket in general to start <laughs> start supporting this era suburban because the same thing is going to happen in five years that happened to the 800s and the early 900s as they become yeah. increasingly affordable if if i could find and, a slee off-road like style slim bumper for the front of the suburban i absolutely yeah absolutely would do that yeah oh, it's 2017. 17. Um, I was trying to find the Slee bumper that I love. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get like a ranch hand bumper or something. That no, like I don't. 200 pounds I, in the front. I, <laughs> I love the cooling. ARB like square look, but like the, there's nothing square about the Suburban. It's like it, all the edges are kind of rounded until you get to mm-hmm. the very back. So like, I feel like those don't really look as good. And of course, now the image that I was looking for disappeared. <laughs> I'm having a great Google search night. Uh, <laughs> There we I know. Go. I oh think I know what you're talking about. Man, uh, it's so Slee used to, they used to make a kit for the hundreds that I think was just called like the Yes Kit or something. And mm-hmm. it was like bumper suspension sliders skids. Oh, so good. Dude, that sounds fantastic. And I'd say yes to all of that. So I'm, I am guess I'm giving Slee free advertising that because it's even a <laughs> like a branded photo, but just a, a, just a subtle come right under the nose of the grill on the Suburban. I don't, I just don't want all this extra stuff. And even the one I sent you the other day, Ross, had all those extra like fog light holes before below. Mm-hmm. And the circle ones just looked weird. And then the square light pods, I was just like, I it just it didn't seem right. Um yeah. I don't know, man. If, yeah. anyway. if if approach angle and protection is a big thing, I'd wager that there's a fab shop in your area that could whip something up. I mean, my move is probably just to go find a Z71 bumper and move on. So that too. That too. Yeah. Those are a little harder to find. 17? Yeah, 17. 17? Yeah, I was just looking at uh, some options here. <laughs> Not great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, might be an option. Fab Four's Vengeance front bumper. Okay. Have a Google with that one. Oh, but... no. Ven- I got to figure out how to spell Vengeance. <laughs> that way. I am- um oh that's interesting that's not as bad as i was expecting so many of these things are like sema you know like friggin' star destroyer looking things right right yeah Fab Force makes a lot of bumpers outside of the grumper which is what they're known for so hmm. interesting <laughs> okay the, i get confused by the box well, I got confused by the price of the one I found said only 70. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy I'll buy 20 of them at 70. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Shit, I'll be a wholesaler for 70 bucks. So not quite uh, the right era of truck, but not enough lights. Not enough. That's the other thing, is I, I don't really need the extra lighting, but I wouldn't mind like a stealth light bar behind the grill. Like that's as I've started to like think about modifying, I'm st- I I'm remembered the things I didn't like that I did to the Land Cruiser, and I did have those big round lights up front. But like for me, I just don't have a lot of trips where I'm in the dark traveling at night. And yes, it it would be very beneficial in that scenario, but the rest of the time, it's just it, the look of it. Just I ruined my Land Cruiser is what I'm saying to me. <laughs> I liked my old eighty roundness and. It was great, but I ruined it with all the dumb lights and snorkel and all that fun stuff. Oh, ruined in one capacity. Does that mean that you're getting older or growing up yes. at all? I don't, I don't, I think it's just more, I, I understand <laughs> more of what I like and want. No, no, I think no. it's what it is. Knowing what you like and don't like is important. Yep. Here, I got, I got, I got, this is what it was at the end. 
snorkel, like, light. Just to. I need all yeah. that. Lights and a snorkel. Yeah, I'd, Josh, I'd, yeah, I'd say that's understandable. You're still rocking the stock wheels on some like, KO2s, it looks like. So. Yeah. Like, but, but then I have. Then I have this though. So this is so clean. Yeah. <laughs> Minimalist. Yeah. I think I'm more of that style. Okay. And here I am talking about a rack for the suburban. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. This just to, just to round out this conversation. One or the other. And and yeah. tie it back in. This reiterates the thing we always say, which is like the best off router is the one you have. Right. Mm-hmm. So what happens if you have more than one? Or two, or well, three. they're all the best. Then, then yeah, then they're all the best. <laughs> like then you uh, just have options to choose from the best. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part of that is Mercedes did the segue for you there. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> landed that one for me. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So, so do you want to start with off-roaders you don't technically own that you borrowed for a rally? Yeah. Which one? Which rally? Because <laughs> there are two. <laughs> well, I know that's the fun part. Uh, well, Chris, do you want to start in the land of Subaru or Jeep? Jeep. Jeep. Okay. Jeep, let's do it. All right. So, Rebel. All that right. This, this past so, year's Andy, event. Wait, no. <laughs> yes, there it is. There she is. The beautiful high velocity 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4 by e plug-in hybrid. That so is the see it from space it color. It does. It is. It, it was... It, is a very beautiful color um you know it, it literally is a, a tinge of a lime to it but ever so subtle when you walk mm-hmm. it walk up to it it's very high letter yellow but it grew on me as the week uh went on um for those of you that aren't familiar this is an off-road rally the rebel rally it's about 14 to 1500 miles mainly all off-road it's all women um typically about 50 to 52 teams um, and I was one of the few um, electrified vehicles uh, that did this competition. This is my third year competing uh, this year on behalf of Jeep. And uh, we were a team Norwester. There's my lovely navigator. I was the driver for the competition. The, the gal on the left is Emily Winslow. She's out of Seattle area in Washington. And uh, yeah, it was a bone stock uh, a vehicle. We did, uh, we did pretty well. So um, there it is getting plugged in and uh, there, yeah, there, that light, you can see a little bit more of a tinge of green on it, but a brand new color colorway for the uh, 2023 uh, 4xE electric, electrified vehicle. So, okay. So the first question here is, was the approach to enter with an electrified vehicle, like, is there a specific class for anything that has a hybrid-ish powertrain? Or did, it is. It did is. Jeep... And it is, and that that photo you might want to just hang out of that photo for a little okay. while. Oh yeah, <laughs> that needs explanation. <laughs> yeah, it's um, seen some shit. It's 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 seen some stuff. Yes, it has. Um, that that photo is worth about um more than a thousand words, but uh, well, I'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> so yeah, a couple of years ago, um, so the rally had instituted uh, what is called the electrified designation. Um, so it allows electrified vehicles, so it could be anything from a fully electric vehicle, so all electric with no gasoline, Mm -hmm. um, you know, assistance, to a plug-in hybrid, to even a regular hybrid, which is interesting. So non-plug-in hybrid vehicle can also be part of this. So Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if that designation actually changes or not, if it's just only EVs or not. Um... This is interesting because my team, so Emily and myself, separately we competed in ICE vehicles, so internal combustion engine vehicles, um, as separate teams in 2018. Then I was media in 2019, where she competed in a separate team with another ICE vehicle. And then we partnered with uh, Volkswagen out of America with the first ever all electric, all electric uh, VW ID4, which is an all electric crossover. Remember that? And so we made history doing that mm-hmm. last year in 2021. And then we did a plug-in hybrid, um, which of course was with Jeep. So we, uh, to my knowledge, were the only team to do all of those three different types of powertrains. Hmm. So it's interesting because it's as cool. that all evolves, we need to kind of figure out as the technology evolves and the charging infrastructure or the lack thereof, because it's hmm. kind of a rolling temporary thing as you go throughout the desert, how that ends up working and if the destination will change or morph along with it. So. It'll be right. interesting to see how that goes. Did you experience any difficulties, intricacies, or 
anything otherwise uh, due to the electrified nature of the Jeep versus the straight electric of the ID4 or prior ICE cars? Yeah, it 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 was a whole different ball game. Um, so you were just saying using other people's uh, vehicles for rallies um, a lot. I, I use a lot of other people's vehicles for rallies, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> it's a um, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, I've used our own Pajero ones um, as, a as a navigator in the 2020 um, Alcan 5000 rally, which I did with Andy here um, as a driver. Um, in 2018, I rallied my then partner's husband's work and um, personal truck. It was a 2012 Toyota uh, Tacoma. Um, uh, right off. <laughs> um, the transmission. No pressure there. Right. It's fully customized, um, you know, gutless V6, but it still ran. Um, brand new clutch because the old clutch gave out during a uh, glamorous practice. Ah, um, ah. But it was a good At truck. least it was practice. It, yeah, it was right. practice. Yeah, it was practice when the old clutch gave out. Yes. So we had a brand new clutch that I was uh, babying during um, during an actual rally. Um, but that was uh, the ICE vehicle. And then with the VW, it was all electric and it was all wheel drive um, derivative. Yeah, exactly. So that was, um, and it was a great truck. It was a, it was a um, fantastic truck. It was um, wonderfully dialed in. Um, and so in 2021, when we did the VW ID4, it was uh, the very first time that the all wheel drive derivative of it came out. So I, they sent me over to the East Coast to um, test drive just the stock all wheel drive derivative. The rear wheel drive was uh, had earlier come out. And the all-wheel drive variant had just come out three weeks hmm. before the rally had hit. And oh, wow. so they took literally the uh, rear, I'm sorry, the all-wheel drive, one of them from that media event, and then shipped it over to Reesmill and Racing on the West Coast and said, okay, That's we amazing. want to do just a couple of quintessentially important but minimal upgrades to it, kept it at stock height, which was 6.7 hmm. inches above the ground. Stands the um, full body yeah. skid plate. Very low. Very, that very, is, very low. That is not. 6.7 is like. Very, very low. But like they, regular and, and that was, sedan height. <laughs> it was sedan height. But uh, that was um, also they had. That was stands a skid plate too that they put under body as well. So that was minus that too. So we're maybe a, just a tinge above six and a half. Um, and with that, they didn't really do or had the chance to really do any testing with what does it do off-road in this type of condition um, with the range? And so You're the guinea pigs. We were the guinea pigs, yes. I mean, so Tanner Faust um, did a fully kitted out. Um, you're, I'm, you're, you're shaking your heads already, the Nora rig. We had him on the show. Did you really? Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tanner had a chance to uh, work with us for a couple hours with that rig with some pre-testing a few hours before i think it was like a day or two before um we had a chance to be at the start line with the this actual rally rig and he helped us kind of do the actual hmm. driving you know off-road with it some of the tips and tricks that he learned with the nora rig and translate that into the all-wheel drive derivative so it was really cool just to meet him and just get some pointers and just be like there's tanner and he's teaching me how to drive awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it was pretty not, cool. not a um, bad teacher. It, not a bad teacher at all. Um, for us, we didn't know how it was going to react in heat. We didn't really know how it was going to react with total range. You know, we with extreme terrain, a lot of it would be rocks, some silt, mm -hmm. a lot of sand, um, loose terrain, off camber. You know, just single track. How, how would it be? Would it use up? You know, four how kilometers does of range. Traction control fair and all those conditions with well, like light modifications. Well, oh. we disabled a lot of that because we wanted to make sure that it wasn't safety systems trying to stop you from needing to bump it up yeah. over if you needed to. <laughs> bog, 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 bog. Yeah. 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 So, so there was a lot of learning on the fly. Um, and Emily Winslow, my navigator, did a phenomenal job, just really, you know, understanding. Okay, just kind of game game planning what she thought. There she is going, yeah, I found a checkpoint. <laughs> Go back. She's uh, in the foreground. She's hilarious. I love her to death. Love you, Emily. Um, but uh, she she constantly rechecked. She checked my range. She checked her math and told me to just kind of lay up a little bit, ease up a bit, go a little bit faster. She she And we were very, very, very conservative. We never needed to tow out. 
we probably were too conservative and, and bowed out of the planned route and kind of came back in and went out and in and out and in versus what you probably should have done to make sure we were, were not going to lose because you couldn't, you couldn't really like lose your range and all of a sudden go, Oh, I'm dead. You need to tow off a single track. Small by, by, you know, <laughs> you, you can't put the semi up there and get a charge, you know? Um, <laughs> so, but we made it work. So we never needed a charge, never had any mechanical issues and it never, you know, it did great. And the Jeep, the Jeep is great. I mean, you know, you basically plug it in. We ran it in all EV mode um, when it was just low range. I needed full concentration on very tough terrain. Otherwise, we ran it in hybrid. Hmm. Interesting. It's fantastic. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It, so you learned a... as you go. Basically, we learned as we went along, and each vehicle was completely different. So that was hmm. a very long answer to your question. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for. It's just a lot yeah, we're I know, I know, I know. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's good. And it's a totally different, I mean, we've had, we're like quietly becoming the unofficial podcast of the Rebel Rally, it seems. And this is a very different side of things because we've had all electric, we've had, you know, normal ice. And now this is very, it's a different take. And the plug-in you know, hybrid. The plug -in, yeah, everybody has a different experience too. And, and here oh, yeah. another I side is also always great. I could talk about just that as far as ice plug-in and all electric <laughs> for at least an hour. That bit alone because it's so different. I heard it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll put a show on the books to to discuss that. So I, I want to talk about the uh, the Alcan and the wilderness because the Outback Wilderness has also quietly become kind of like one of the favorites of the off roading community when the off roading doesn't necessitate low range right. um, mm -hmm. so yeah tell i mean alcan rally itself is a whole story so how'd you get involved and and what's your uh what's your psychological investment in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need therapy afterwards so, uh, <laughs> well, good kind so uh <laughs> yeah so that's the the outback wilderness as we first kind of got it we threw on a rally innovations Light bar and uh, four light force venom lights. There it is with the li full livery oh, on it. Um, but so we have, we, I had always kind of wanted to do this in 2020. We did it in our own personal vehicle in 1991, Mitsubishi Pajero with a diesel engine in it, drove all the way up to the Arctic Ocean in February, March 2020. Uh, at the end of the 2020 uh, uh, rally, we had the opportunity to sign up for 2022. We, without hesitation, did so. 2020 was a summer version. It's like the Olympics where they do the, well, they'll do a winter, then a summer, then a winter, et cetera. It mm -hmm. alternates every two years. Yeah. So um, this year's iteration went from Kirkland, Washington, to uh, as far north as Dawson City, uh, Yukon. Hmm. Uh, well, went over into, uh, went over, well, it's going to be bad. So, but it went over into yeah. Uh, there. Yeah, it went over into Skagway, Alaska, and then uh, as far east as uh, Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, and then finished in beautiful Jasper, Alberta. So, um, huh. but the the uh, uh, the Outback Wilderness, uh, we partnered with Subaru of America on that one, and I mean, I I'm pretty sure that was pretty much the perfect, perfect vehicle car. for the really the Alcan. Huh. I've had enough room for the gear. It had so 260 horsepower, so enough power to get going. It had nine and a half inches of ground clearance, which was great for the bad roads and the frost heaves and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of plenty of suspension travel for what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And it was comfortable. I mean, it really was. My only criticism is, is I, I would have preferred to have a manual transmission which you can't get in the outback wilderness it's uh comes with the cvt but uh, CVT's otherwise never good no it, it, cvt they're great for fuel economy you better with it when you're but, picking it over to manual transmission i mean yeah in, yeah. in the actual time section yeah the time we put it into the manual mode but then i would have to remember you know okay well we're slowing down we gotta yeah so the mud up right. there the dirt they put down calcium, calcium chloride oh <laughs> And uh, and it's unbelievable. It turns into this like adobe, and it's uh it's crazy. So and very dusty, incredible amounts of bugs. Um, but uh, 
it was a it was a great experience. Uh, we're already signed up for the 2024 Winter Rally again. Nice. Uh, we're going to go do that vehicle TBD, and then. Um, but we're already we've already got a car number, and, and uh, looking forward to that. Oh, wow. uh, just about 400 days until that. Not that I'm counting. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing is, is yeah. it's the winter version, so it's a little over a year away. We're literally T minus almost like a little. Over yeah, that's so I'm that's already soon. like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like there. I'm like you, you got the bug, and then once it starts, it's, oh, it dude, doesn't let up. Hard, it's hard, hard. hard. Like it's I'll tell you, Alcan, Alcan is a Alcan yeah. is a. It becomes a bit of a a, a, a fraternity or, or mm. a a wrong word family. It's family. yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Was There's no hazing. It becomes a bit of family slightly dysfunctional but uh <laughs> you're slightly you're among, dysfunctional you're among fringe lunatics like what are we doing like there were i remember the day on the summer Alcan rally where we went 16 hour drive day and we're just like i i was i remember getting tired not tired exhausted and just being like this is supposed to be fun why do we do this again but you know it it is fun, but it's it is there are some very long days and there's some uh very uh, uh challenging drive routes that really do you don't realize it until you're in the thick of things and it becomes a psychological day, day when you're doing these eight hundred mile drive days mm. uh luckily in the summer when the sun doesn't set until very late but uh, everyone's like, oh, you'll never bother to use those light force lights. It stays so light. Well, I'll tell you what, we we used all four of them and dodged porcupines and deer and oh. all kinds of animals and moose yep. and yep. all kinds of stuff. So we use, I don't know if you can see this very easily. Um, this this is the, um, we tried to institute our, uh, we're in the SOP class, so the seat of pants class. It might be kind of hard to see. It's long <laughs> division for all the time oh. speed distance. So the time speed sections of it, those that, of you that aren't familiar with time speed distance rallying, this is not a go fast, go hard, go long, see who's the quickest to get to your end goal. This is an endurance precision rally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Andy's saying, you have to be on time, on route, you know, accuracy. It's all about accuracy. Yeah. So yeah. when he's saying that it's like, chess, it's not bowling. challenge. <laughs> To just be like, he wants to go, go, ah, no, you know, he wants that immediate, like, you know, that I want to reaction. Kick down here or, exactly, or whatever. Down immediately. And so he needs to finesse it. And so I need to, as a navigator, try to do interim, you know, like intervals to be like, okay, mm -hmm. you need me. So I'll read this. It's so. an example, but the Alcan 5000 is, an, is, a, is a combination of sleep deprivation and long division. Chronic <laughs> <I'm> hunger. <laughs> And so well, math and, when uh, you're tired and hungry is what I just yeah. Said. I mean, yeah. it doesn't tired have to math. be. It doesn't have to be fun to be rewarding. That's, <laughs> that's not always fun. Right? Yeah, if you have to do box for over five thousand miles with your husband. I love you, honey. Um, <laughs> or or your competitor, and it doesn't matter if it's a mm. summer version like we just did with Subaru, or if it's the winter version like we did in 2020 with our right-hand drive diesel 1990s Pajero, which who would do that in temps of negative 43 it's below. Like different creature comforts. You know, because we do that. that. Um, you know, up to the Arctic Ocean, who does that? Only French lunatics. It's not an off-road rally. This, but but this one, especially in the winter version, is an ice and snow rally. But the summer version, like what, what we did here with um with Subaru, that was we did all the alternative uh, alternative, excuse me, um, uh, gra uh, gravel and dirt stuff. Yeah, there's 2020. That uh, the vehicle that we owned that we did it with. But the 2022 we just got done uh, with Subaru with. We did all the alternative dirt and gravel. That was 1,500 miles, about 1,500 hmm. miles of dirt and gravel oh, that wow. we did. Oh, my gosh. We drive it from Los Angeles to Calgary on nothing but dirt. What tires were on it? Uh, it came with Yoko. It, yeah, the stock, it was the a stock, stock Yokohamas? Um, Geolander wow. G015s, which, which is the tire we've owned before. It's a great tire. Uh, Super good huh. in a lot of a lot of conditions. So and we had zero flats. We carried two full size spares wow. and no flats. Two full size spares because we figured, you know what? If we don't, something's going to happen. If we did, nothing's nothing. going to happen. Of course, we, oh, yeah. we would. Nothing would happen. Right. Nothing did. 
but they'll well, carry the weight. So yeah, it's it's the better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But it's always the opposite of what you Absolutely. end up doing. So 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 people always, people always make fun of all the extra you know gear that we end up carrying and. And he's starting to make these uh, funny luggage cart reviews to the hotel. Oh I've yeah, those are those. those are very very good. <laughs> it's a commentary on how much shit you end up. But because they make sense now, you know that we just you know we're always prepared. So yeah, you know, understeers Anyways. at the limit. <laughs> so how does for, uh for our luggage cart? <laughs> <laughs> How does the uh, how does the outback wilderness tie into the cross track, or does it not mm-hmm. in any way? Good question. Well, yeah, that's a great question. We actually picked up the let's see, we picked up the cross track that we purchased in uh, June, and okay. that's an early version of it where we've got the BF Goodrich Ko twos and the Rika secret wheels on it, but nothing yeah. else done there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had. Uh, we were looking to have, we were looking to buy a vehicle that we could hop in and go anywhere at pretty much any time. We have a uh, family back in the Midwest and, uh, you know, they're not, they're not getting any younger. And, uh, we, as reliable, there's a, there's a modern yeah, photo. That's so we've got the Rally Innovations light bar and the light force light lights. We've got the Rika Seeker wheels, the BF Goodrich Cam 2s. Uh, that's how it that. should come from the factory. Primitive yeah, skid, yeah. Primitive skid plates, nameless stuff on it yeah, too. Exhaust and, and stuff. Yeah. So heavy, heavy campers. <laughs> but yep. so we wanted a vehicle that we could drive at pretty much any time of the year back to the Midwest if we needed to or wanted to. Um, because before we had that, we had three JDM thirty-year-old four by fours that are all diesels yeah, and a lower Toyota. So the vehicular Toyota. masochism. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toyota. That's with our my rally partner's uh, husband. Which we sold to them. My it was a partner's great vehicle, husband. but it is not a great vehicle to go over the mountain passes of the snow in. And, 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 well, and our four-wheel drive JDM stuff is fantastic off-road and it's plenty comfortable, but it's like 65, 70 miles an hour. And mm-hmm. I don't want to get a bit salty back in the Midwest. Like We drove to Wisconsin mm-hmm. for the holidays and I don't have a problem putting, bringing a brand new vehicle through the salt and stuff like that, wash it. But a, a, a 30 year old JDM Mitsubishi, I was just like, I don't want to get it dirty and salty and, and well, uh, rusty. And since then, we've Core 15, I don't know if you guys are familiar mm-hmm. with Core 15. Yep. So yep. we've inhibited all three of our vehicles. We've done that treatment. Um, thank you, Mark, ha- Mark, Mark Hatton from MPH Specialties here in Portland. We paid him dearly to uh, treat all of our vehicles, and he's <laughs> lovingly call. done it and charged us more every single time we've bought <laughs> their vehicle. What a business model. Do it because he's learned how to now do it every time better. Um, mm. But we've done it since then because we don't want the, you know, all the, you know, rust to get in there. Yeah. So. But the Wait. Track is exactly what we wanted, sands about 100 horsepower, yeah. but uh, uh, it, it goes, it'll... Mission. It'll do 80, 85 uh, miles an hour in Idaho and Montana and stuff like that. It gets decent fuel economy. It's capable, uh, especially with the BF Goodrich tires on there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it does exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, if Subaru was to do a wilderness version of the cross track and keep the stick shift in it with more horsepower, Hurrah. so have the Outback engine or turbo you know, more horsepower. So, I have at least five. 10. Like yeah, I, I, I've been saying <laughs> since the, the cross truck came out. Because we wanted to roll our own gears. We wanted, when we mandated, because everything mm. we've ever owned has been a stick shift. Both wow. of us. That's a track everything. record. So, so we're nice. the only two um, in politics. Speaking so. of, yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No, I, I've been saying since the cross truck came out, if they built I mean, at the time, the joke was like a cross track WRX or STI, but mm-hmm. if they built one and it had Still. ground clearance and a turbo and a stick and like some kind of, you know, protective armor in any way, shape or form, I would buy one. I and so, one. so have about other, packet. yeah, literally dozens of us. <laughs> that was the, that was the, think of the sales number. Yeah, I mean, girl, right here on the right. podcast. Yes. It's like the, yeah, you guys have probably heard. Oh, yeah. You guys have probably heard those those like the the joke about like they should make 
the journalist special editions, right? It's literally brown it's the manual, brown Volkswagen, wagon. Jetta yeah. wagon, yeah. diesel with the six speed. You know, it's yeah. like, yep. oh yeah, dozens of sales. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would well, you, so, go ahead. You can buy a brown BMW like that, I think. Well, you mm. used to be able to buy a brown <laughs> Volkswagen, Jetta wagon, diesel <laughs> with the manual for like, you know, True. two years or something like that. It was probably only sold to people who write about cars. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Or that stupid W8 all-wheel drive stick wagon they made for like, I don't know, a day. Yeah. I the, realized that it was. Passat, I think it was. It was a Passat wagon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, we're we're getting close to Derek Powell territory here with weird <laughs> German wagons. I, I just saw that. <laughs> you literally just saw it in person, actually. Yeah, yeah. he drove through. <laughs> yeah. So, so the only way I see anybody is you have to be driving through the Midwest, and then you stop. I feed you, and we move on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll that next time. That's yeah. Wisconsin, you know, that's where I'm from. Right, but I'm way south of Wisconsin. <laughs> Very south. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. We're yeah, low Midwest. We're like upper, lower. Yeah, Upper we we've gotten into this before on the show where like people from Ohio are like, I'm mm. from the Midwest. And I was like, I don't think that's the Midwest. Like, I'm midway to the West. Like I saw I'm I saw something yeah, like on Reddit today. And somebody said, Why doesn't the Midwest just get absorbed into the Northeast? I was like, no. have no. you ever looked at God, that? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Which more than you uh, than any of Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Not Which good. It's, been my favorite reels lately it's like the midwest version of pickleball and it, they have the wisconsin accents and they're drinking beer the whole time and they murder the athletic people who show up to play pickleball it's fantastic to me well, yeah, um, so, um, back to just two seconds so amy and i used to be part of a, a, a bowling league when we both lived in wisconsin <laughs> of course that's one of the things that you did you can't get a driver's license <laughs> without being on a bowling league. yeah <laughs> Monday night drunks, and it was actually on Wednesday nights. On Wednesday nights, though, but it was apparently a drinking league that liked to bowl. Yes, yes, yes. So, so that was their whole shtick. But you know, yeah, I've I've been a part of a a rowing team in college that was a drinking team that also rowed. So yeah, (laughs) the dude abides. Anyways, uh, can we talk about Warren for a few minutes? Sure. Any fun new innovations, updates? Uh, stuff in the pipeline that you can share or uh, just power we have, through? We have a lot of really cool things in the pipeline that I cannot talk about. So ah. uh, <laughs> one of the things that we do sell these days, um, uh, one of the lesser known products is wheels. We sell uh, our line of worn Epic wheels. Those are a set by that. eight and a half, three different styles, two different finishes, uh, two different bolt patterns. So you've got your six on 139.7 for your Ford Broncos, uh, for your Toyota, ton- your new Toyota Tundras, um, a host of other vehicles. Hmm. And then um, we have the uh, five on 127 for the uh, Wrangler JL, uh, the Gladiator, and the JK. So hmm. uh, those are our best, the best selling model, the Jackhammer, but we have three other styles available in a black and a gunmetal gray finish. Uh, they're all going to be a zero offset. So uh, works with factory lug nuts, works with, works with TPMS. So uh, we also have the hub. The center cap looks sort of like the worn hubs. The four-wheel drive hubs is a yeah, yeah. That's, that's and good. those are available with the, in gold. Uh, the hub cap, the caps are, but they're also an option, a, a red one. If it, gold's not your thing. So hmm. yeah, always forget about that. I mean, in the same way that like Icon makes wheels, and I'd always right. forget that Icon makes wheels. You know, it's right. It's right. Somebody's branching out, but no, that, yeah. that's. That's exciting we, stuff. I mean, right. So the other the other thing too is that we have we now have four brands under the under the uh, under the same ownership. So we've got uh, Fact Fifty Five. No, yeah, those are going to be the uh, yeah. Sorry, anyway, <laughs> six low. That's okay. That's okay. Those are our diamond cutters. Anyway, uh, we're we're four brands now. So of course we have Warren Industries. Um, then we have Factor Fifty Five that makes rigging equipment. Uh, we have Fab Fours which makes bumpers. Um, a couple of other products, uh, roof racks, uh, excuse me, bed racks. Uh, and then uh, we also have Fat Tech Suspension that makes a whole host of uh, of different suspension options, everything from just re- sort of a upgraded shock absorber to full-on remote reservoir coilovers, that kind of thing called Dirt Logic. So uh, 
we're, oh. we, we're growing the brands, uh, growing the the uh, kind of expanding into some new territory, which is always exciting. So. I did not realize that you had FabTech. Yep. Or Fab Forest. Um, that is definitely interesting. Yeah. I. Ross is now yeah, thinking about suspension. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I had no idea. It's no, cra- like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like you learn this stuff like as you go. You know, I mean, shit. Talk about all the companies that wheel pros has absorbed over the years. Yeah. You know? No kidding. But, yeah, those uh, those tie rods and whatnot for the Bronco won a uh, an award at SEMA, so that's cool. But what uh, did the early Broncos have tie rod problems? Uh, um, <laughs> probably overblown because heard. of the internet, but they were. <laughs> I don't the know, fact they were, that aftermarket companies manufactured a solution, uh, yes, they did. Yes. There were some videos <laughs> uh, that got out there of the stock tie rods on you know thirty fives and thirty sevens not having their best days. I've seen it happen in person so yeah but yeah. Uh, but thankfully the aftermarket comes uh comes comes a call so but uh yep. so we've got a whole host of products out that a variety of vehicles these days so uh so that's that's probably the biggest deal is that we're all kind of under one one um one roof we're all separate companies well and we operate separately uh but we're all through the same ownership mm-hmm. cool yeah. um on the topic of winches since mm-hmm. that's uh kind of what draws it all back together Right. Are you seeing the shift to synthetic with the ferocity that the aftermarket world makes it seem like is happening? Or are there still people who live and die by steel? Uh, the answer is yes to both. I mean, there's a, <laughs> Fair enough. There's a huge shift to, to synthetic rope with good reason. It's lightweight, easy to handle, that kind of stuff. Doesn't hold the uh, potential energy under mm-hmm. tension, that kind of stuff. Um, as somebody who's pulled a lot of cable and teaches winching classes, I would much <laughs> rather work with synthetic rope any day. It's just easier. It doesn't yes. burn smash, all that. It doesn't cut the shit out of you the same way if you're not wearing the red gloves, which That's I've, true. I've, I've never done that ever. Red gloves, because I've had rope. Everybody's had rope burn. Yeah, who's ever uh, used a rope. Um, and that goes for, for power sports and, and, uh, and truck. But uh, uh, steel cable still has its place. Steel cable is exceptionally abrasion resistant. I can take out mm-hmm. my my knife and cut a length of synthetic rope. I can't do that with steel cable. So mm-hmm. there's a reason like tow truck operators are still using steel cable because it drags around right. on the ground all day. Um, if you're using a winch to skid logs or using it in a very high abrasion environment, using it for utility purposes, steel cable can still be a great option mm-hmm. for you because you don't have to worry about that abrasion. If you're using synthetics, you need to lay down something to prohibit that abrasion. It'll, mm-hmm. it'll save the life of the, of the rope, that kind of thing. There's a little sleeve, right? Abrasion little... sleeves. Yeah. If you don't yeah. have that, put a floor mat down over that stump you're winching over, anything. So, uh, there was... But synthetic is, is definitely become more popular. There was an interesting conversation on one of the... I can't remember if it was a forum or a Facebook page the other day, but, but somebody came up with a winch bumper for the gx and i can't for the life of me remember if it was a 460 or the 470 but the angle at which the fair lead was pitched basically made like a ridge over which there was abrasion if you had a you know a synthetic cable and it was just a, causing abrasion right from the start and all the comments were like uh hope you're doing steel and it's like and the company kind of responded was like uh, didn't think that through. So, yeah, yeah. there's there's a you know, a place for things. You know, we 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 advocate for having a fair lead where the rope passes over um, at a, at a ninety degree. You see some that are at a, at a forty five or a different angle. Um, Not good. It's it's going to be the least uh, degradation on the rope if you have it at that ninety degree. Uh, you know. Uh, I think we even may have one option, or maybe I'm not even sure, but I think most of ours have most of ours, if not all of them, do have it at a at a near ninety. So, mm-hmm. but you know, it's trigonometry. Thing, it's like yeah. Well, it's the other thing too, high school math. Large, <laughs> having a large radius, fairly so a fairly that has a big bend on the on the opening is going to help reduce that as well. 
Fox 55 and Warren both all sell that. Well, you get the, some of the cheaper winches, and it's almost a, just a sharp 90. That's the stuff that really just mm. wears on synthetic rope. And uh, we we sell our steel rope with, with uh, roller fittings. So. Okay. On the topic of the Factor 55 stuff, I have a Factor 55. Uh, the I don't I don't even know what it's called. It, it replaces the hook. Oh, uh-huh. shock. Yeah, 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 and I, I still haven't swapped it over. So, what are the benefits of getting rid of the hook itself and going to? I mean, what Factor Fifty Five has basically made popular and famous in the off road no road community. Is there aside from you know, not a piece of hunk of metal? Is uh, is there any other benefit? Absolutely, yeah. So if you look up the term closed system winching, Factor 55 came up with this idea of called closed system winching. So instead of using a hook that has a safety clasp, I don't have a hook right here with me, but you know, you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna, I know, I have one right over there. But anyway, um, sure. if you have a hook that has a latch, <laughs> no, it's okay, that has a latch, right? It's a spring-loaded latch, right? Mm. That can fail under certain instances. The Factor 55 product uh, uses what they call closed system winching. So winching. So you're taking a shackle and running the pin directly through a hole in that shackle nut. That closes that, and it's not possible. There's no link, or there's no um, there's no safety clasp. So a shackle gotcha. would go right through that hole and and then secure it. Mm-hmm. So there's no there's no way for that safety latch mm. to be uh, uh, damaged in the winching process. So okay. uh, in that respect, it creates a more secure connection uh, and just takes a variable out of the winching equation. So uh, we've been, Warren has sold winches with hooks since 1959 and uh, uh, it wasn't until later that they started putting the safety class on there. And uh, the Factor 55 is a different way to do stuff. It's all American made, all super, super durable. They do a ton of testing, a ton of destructive testing. Uh, it's a super, super good product. Plus. It does look good. They're available in a whole host of colors to accessorize with the vehicle. So different way of doing things, more secure way of doing it. Cool. That's, uh, that's good to know and mm-hmm. is now on my to-do list. <laughs> good it's, call. Yeah, Dude, it's I'm, been in the trunk of the Lexus since I got it. And I'm just like, maybe someday. So I'll make that. You're one, you're one snap ring flyer set away from putting that on. <laughs> well. That is uh, about 12 feet from where the truck sits. So beautiful. Perfect. So, Chris, uh, you have any other stuff you want to run through? Any other? Dude, it took me forever topics? to try to find a worn hook with the safety latch photo large enough to uh, share. Yeah. <laughs> I have so, so many small. of those those red <laughs> things whatever they are like the this yeah i have like i don't know how i end up with a collection of those things i must have like five or six of them you know so, sounds like keychains yeah keychain luggage, 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 yeah. luggage yeah. strap that's a good you know, idea a little yeah. fun trivia bit about those is they're not just like this clever little marketing thing that hangs off <laughs> It's designed to be grabbed onto as you're spooling the winch line back into mm-hmm. the vehicle to keep your hands and fingers away from the opening. It's actually a quite mm-hmm. highly engineered piece because they've designed the opening on it to not slip off the hook, and they've designed it to be the right amount of, of grab and distance away from that fairly. So uh, more than just a clever marketing ploy, it's a functional piece. Uh, also good to keep your co-driver away from slap them on the leg. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. It's funny. Duly noted. I'll, get, I, I'll get those people. They're like, what are these things? And I'm like, oh, you take these. And when your passenger starts sleeping, you slap on the leg. Like, <laughs> like, no. We, like we've been in the car too long together. And, it like, has. Rally days. You know, 16 like, hours of rally. Yeah. We don't condone violence on this show, but this no. might get a pass. See, that's, that's where I, because I live in four kid world all the time. I'm like, sleeping passengers is the best thing ever. Oh yeah! Don't wake them up. Let them sleep. <laughs> you want that piece? <laughs> Only one car that my kid has failed to fall asleep in, and that was the X three M competition, which rode like a freaking dump truck. <laughs> that poor, that poor girl. 
compressed vertebrae, but yeah, yeah they, they can fall asleep. So. She's, She's young; she can walk sick. it off. Yeah, 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 yeah walk. Uh, yeah. Like us. All right, uh, Chris. Any other stuff for our? Top for winches? conversation tonight. Well, uh, we had an ultimate overland adventure. Oh, yeah. party. It, so while Mercedes, while Mercedes was doing the rebel rally, I was on the <laughs> overland uh, adventure. Two? Yeah, two? I was on the overland adventure to Four Wheeler Magazine, where we uh, we went through all uh, the California desert, desert and uh, explored a whole, whole bunch of historical places. I took my '92 Mitsubishi Pajero along with along with my uh, uh, little Danute trailer with a rooftop yeah. tent on it. Oh, nice. It was mine Wait, for a few days. That was this year's Overland. So I mean, yes. we know Hol Holman was there, right? He kind of yeah. runs it. So, so we own two Pajeros. That's our other one. We both own them. It's kind of a his and hers. We jokingly say, but we <laughs> they're both ours. The, yeah. the, the one. Right is the one not circle. pictured prior from Alcan that's on FJ Wheels? That yeah. was sort of hers, but... Uh... Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so this is the first one we bought, which was kind of his, and then I got jealous and I was wanting to off-road and everything. So the dark gray one, which is more masculine style, kind of ended up as mine, which is the one that <laughs> ended up at the Arctic Circle in the middle of winter. Huh, weird how that happens. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, I took this one on the Overland Adventure, and uh, it uh, was about 2,400 total miles, well, about 3,300 miles, including getting down there with the trailer. It's the only time I've ever been happy that the speed limit in California is 55 when towing, so, uh, because <laughs> this thing is not fast. It has a, uh, it has a, uh, we swapped in a Hyundai D4BF turbo diesel into it. It came with a turbo diesel, but um, we had a, we had a problem with it, and we ended up swapping in a brand new engine. So um, it's not fast, but it's very reliable and very dependable. If you look up hashtag Terra Tractor, T-E-R-R-A Tractor, you'll find the Alcan, my Pajero, and then that'll be a quick way to take a look at. And the so, one one's called the Rally Tractor, R-A. Also, speaking of <laughs> diesel swapped trucks, was Adam from uh, Overland History also on this rally with you guys? Or yeah, with you, just, know, just with you, Andy? Yep. He was there in his... Uh, well, I believe it's a five-cylinder Mercedes-Benz powered Jeep XJ. Cherry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's yeah, been I know on the Adam, show. Good guy, awesome rig. So twice we haven't had him on, on but I think he's been on twice. Yeah. So okay, how uh, so prior to the trailer, were you just ground tenting, or did you have well, the tent well, on the Pajero? We, we've had the trailer. We've had the trailer with the um with the rooftop tent on it for a long time, actually. And uh, okay. but you know we we have a ground tent we have a ground tent we have so that's James Pastor in his uh super awesome Via Cross oh he's my a God. super good dude how uh, long has he had that and is it possibly the one that I used to own I don't uh, know if you own that or not <laughs> um, he's got a number of Isuzu vehicles so kind of like we're fringe lunatics with Mitsubishi stuff he's like that with Isuzu I want to drive a Via Cross. I know two people now that own a Via Cross. I want to drive one. It's I great. don't. It's I not don't. great. It's really not I great. Have no desire. If, if you I, look at us, I don't want to drive a BMW Isetta, and I want to drive a Via Cross. Well, yes. Well, I mean, I said it definitely, but the Via Cross. The thing that you don't realize about the Via Cross is that it's it basically sits on the bump stops, so it has all down travel and pretty much no up travel from factory ride height, which means mm -hmm. that every time you hit a pothole or an imperfection. It just compacts right. and bounces your head into the sun, into the headliner. So Our pajamas are the opposite, that where I have uh, up travel and no down travel. So, How tall are you? Um, I was like 5'10 before I had a disc Ross is normal, mostly, right? mostly removed from my back. Oh, okay. So you're, you're several inches taller than me, so I probably don't have the issue of it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, even so. Yeah. Awesome truck, love it. We'll happily own another one, but driving it is not the best. Good to know. I think they're super, super duper cool. It's not a vehicle that's on my to own list, uh, but what? I think they're. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts with an I and not an M, so. I think they're super cool. So, 
they are they're eclectic which Dude, that, turns out is what this show does best yeah we like eclectic <laughs> that it oh, seems yeah. like their rally was a great mix of just different off-roaders yeah it was there was a little bit of everything there were four there was a forward controlled jeep with a v8 I, in it that's the concept there. truck it's, it's, no it's, no it's, it's not the concept that's wait that's not the eastern it's not the, jeep safari no. truck i saw this thing at sema back in like 2012 this thing's amazing like it is yeah, it was like 2013. It was super cool. Oh, V8 350 Chevy swap in it. There were JKs, JLs, Gladiators. There was Adam's Jeep with the diesel, uh, the Via Cross. There were Super Duties, Land Cruisers. Disco. Uh, there was the, uh, the gentleman with the. It's uh, a van. That's uh, a van. Sportsmobile. It it's was. It was and there was the Rogue Overland had their Nissan MV. Uh, super We've cool. had a. Oh, God. What's his name? We had him on the show like. Probably two Nick? and a half years ago. I think it's Nick. Oh, what is? It? Yeah, I think I think you're right. That was a long. Oh, yeah, that was. He he didn't even have this band yet. It was we were still talking. It was just the Xterra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we had the uh, the Girl Scout. She's uh, she's got the uh, Scout there, which was super cool too. Uh, even an old OJ Bronco. Uh, Hell yeah! And it was oh, it was a lot of fun. James's V across, you know. Just, just so cool. On 35s, I think it was. I think on 35s. Oh God! That but must so have we, been a we went to a whole bunch of places that uh, were involved in the Desert Training Center. Uh, you know, before World War II, and a lot of history. Mm. So, yeah, that sounds. This awesome. was like the unofficial four wheeler send off, too. Yeah, which nobody actually knew, um, except which was kind of, you know, kind Sean. of. Uh, <laughs> ironic that we did this last trip and then you know like a month and a half two months later it's like oh they're stopping the, the print publication like holy crap mm -hmm. okay so yeah yeah well opportunities for another to step in maybe i don't know we'll you know there's, there's probably not going to be a shortage of of overland trips and stuff but four wheeler yeah. had a history mercedes and i had done the jp magazine dirt and drive in 2017 and 2018 um, you know, they have Ultimate Adventure, which uh, Warren has been a part of yep. for many years, and this Overland Adventure, which we've done for, I think, two or mm -hmm. three. And I've written a couple of uh, cool pieces, excuse me, for a four-wheeler. So, you know, you never know. Yeah. You never yep. know what'll happen. Yep. Until somebody creates another Top Truck Challenge, just <laughs> doors open. Cheap, cheap yeah. Truck Challenge or Top Truck Challenge? No. I top think it was truck. top top truck challenge was the one yeah, where it was it was top truck challenge. Yeah. It was anything goes, and uh, oh, it was chaos. Sounds like I have some googling to do later. You have some YouTubing to watch. It was yeah. it was very cool. For what it's worth, to um, Mountain Mafia out of Idaho, they put on uh, it's called Mountain Havoc, H A V O C, and uh, they kind of took that top truck challenge idea and still do it. Um, they put out some oh. pretty pretty. Wicked videos, and they have some insane vehicles. That, that These look that. like rock bouncers in the air. Like there, <laughs> there's kind of some of them have the rock bouncer thing going on. Oh. Some of them are just crazy capable. So. Also, oh god, and man, I'm really struggling with names tonight. The guy from uh, Truck Night in America, Patrick, that we had Costello. Yes, yeah, Patrick. Costello. Yeah, we had him on the show, and and Truck Night in America is basically the same thing. You know, just right. Right. I love for TV. I love the air tube over the top. Right? Just, I can <laughs> feel that in my spine. It, it's it's anything it's the shock. Yeah, big old shocks. I think I can't tell, but it looks like that might be on like one tons and you know, yeah. they just they just get it done. So oh. And, uh, yeah, I, no, Idaho's cool. I haven't been to Idaho before. I need to get up there. Oh man, I, I mean uh, this in the best way possible. That it's definitely it's the Texas of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends who live up there, and that makes um, a lot of sense, actually. I, I know it's got a lot to offer. So. Yeah, duly really noted. Like Texas with more mountains. I was looking at pictures of Big Bend National Park today, and I think it's on my in the next. Me too. Five. I want to get list. to Big Bend. Yeah, let's do it. Let's. Uh, yeah. If you guys come through, yeah, Kansas, Chris, can, yeah, we'll just get go, there. Yeah, we could, uh, we when, could get. You know what we, we should do? We will. I, I don't know why I haven't thought of this sooner. We should do an off the road again adventure, like 
Well, we've yeah. had so many different people from the community. Hey, shit, how many did we come up with this? Sh- I mean, plus all the rebel like Emmy and Rebecca and all them and Lynn. Heck like yeah. we could probably plus, do something. Yeah. There we we have generally talked, we haven't talked to someone in every state, but we're getting close. We are. We've been talking actually, and I'm gonna send this your way too. Um, we've been talking about doing a map, like a map of the globe, and the <laughs> guests are gonna put in where they've been, and we're gonna hopefully eventually. The hard part of that is it's, it's literally a globe because we've talked to Greg when he was down under, and Joel's down there still. Oh, nice. yes. Uh, Side note, Grek is back and okay. he's actually in, in your time zone. He's in the <laughs> in Western Canada right now. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think he's in White Horse. Yeah. Yes, he will return shortly. Sweet. So I'm gonna wrap up the show real fast. Yeah. I'm gonna wrap it up before Ross does all the technical producery stuff on the show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we send emails but, uh, about this stuff. We do anyway, I so know. my tired brain is doing you're good it's late it's fine uh you can rate and review the show uh, wherever you listen to podcasts we're, we're generally just about everywhere you can like and subscribe on youtube uh for andy and mercedes there are a number of social accounts so <laughs> we we generally go with crankshaft culture right we just start yep. there and then it's andy underscore lilenthal mercedes underscore lilenthal both are uh instagram if you want to talk to them on twitter you can get there most of crack Chef culture, but you stop at Colt. Yes. And then Mercedes. Right, Chef <laughs> Colt goes to me. Frank Mercedes Colt. is writer with grit on yep. Twitter. Yep. And yeah, you can follow Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on Instagram, the Hooniverse on Twitter. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. And that's it. We've done a show. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>